Hi there and welcome to this video on improving Excel's VLOOKUP using natural language processing and Python. I've got some data here. Uh, this is a list of hedge funds along with their location and their assets under management. Uh, this was just copied from, from Wikipedia and I'm just going to use this data uh, to play around within Excel. Now VLOOKUP is used when we want to find uh, value from a table based on some key. So for example here if I wanted to find the uh, AUM, say for Bridgewater Associates, I'd say VLOOKUP. So look up this value in this table and find column number three. Now if I do that, it's found this value here, which is what we wanted. If I try something else, so let's say DE Shaw, and you'll see I haven't, I haven't put it in exactly the same way that it's here. And if I do the same thing with the VLOOKUP, just doing drop down here, We'll see that this is quite surprising uh, because it's showing us a value which is nothing like the value here. The reason for this is uh, as part of the VLOOKUP, it will try and do an approximate match. You can change that here by setting the last setting to exact match. And if I do that, now we get this NA to mean that this, num this name wasn't, uh, wasn't found. If we put in the full name, then it then finds the correct number here. We can improve on this using uh, NLP or natural language processing. So for example, if I use this new function which I've written, NLP VLOOKUP, pass in this DE Shaw value and the same table, and again say find column three. Now even with the wrong spelling of the name here, it's finding the correct value 34,000. Try that with another one uh, quickly. Let's try uh, Millennium. So if you look up this, this table and column three, and you can see here, even though we haven't put the, uh, the full name, we're getting the same value here. Now using NLP, we can get a measure of uh, kind of the score of how close our match is or not. And this function uh, can tell us this. So if I go in here and if I go in here and say include score, then here we've got this score. So it's saying it's about 70% confidence that that's correct. Uh, here we can also say return us all matches. Uh, and there's not there's only one match for this thing. If I was to do something else like put in management, you'll see now we get quite a few different matches. And if I drop the the column index from here we can get the full table. So if we were looking for something uh, in like a large list of things, this could be a useful way of filtering it down. So if I put in two, for example, now I've only got one result, but it is finding the one we expect. Now, before we get onto the implementation of this uh, NLP VLOOKUP function, I just wanna give credit to this guy, uh, Mauro de Pietro. So he wrote this article on uh, doing VLOOKUP style matching with Python and NLP. Uh, and as part of this article, which I'll, I'll post in the comments below, but he ends up building uh, a web app where you can put this, these tables of data and the web app will tell you uh, how similar they are and match them and stuff. And when I saw that, I thought, you know, that's really, really cool, but how much better would it be if that was actually available in Excel? And that was really the, the origin of this video. So the first thing we need to do to write our NLP VLOOKUP Excel function uh, is write the function in Python. And to do that, so I've got this Python script ready where I've got the, the same table of words that I had in Excel. Uh, so here, rather than in Excel, I've just got it as a, a list of lists in Python. Uh, and I've got this NLP VLOOKUP function where it's going to take uh, a string to look for and then the table of words. So kind of the same as, as in Excel. Now this NLP VLOOKUP function, you'll see, I haven't actually written yet. The first thing we need to do is to get the, the list of words that we're looking in. So we can get those from the table. It's just the first, uh, the first value from each row in the table. So we'll say, oops, words equals uh, first item, whoops, for x in table. There we go. Uh, so that will give us just that, that first column. So it will give us like Bridgewater Associates, Renaissance Technology, all that kind of stuff. And then we're going to use uh, part of the scikit-learn package. We can use this feature extraction 
and to create what's called a, a vectorizer. So we'll say vectorizer uh, equals feature extraction dot text. What this will do is create what's called a, a bag of words matrix. Essentially, it's going to take the uh, the vocabulary from each of the words that we're passing in, uh, and then count how many times those words appear in each string. Uh, so, create this object here, vectors, using the vectorizer. And what we're going to pass in is this value. So the value that we're passing in here is one of the words that we're going to need to to have in this analysis. Uh, and just say plus the uh, words. So this is all of these words on the left-hand side here, plus this words going into this vectors thing. This will return us uh, a NumPy array, but we're going to actually just return it as a normal array like that. Once we've got those vectors, uh, we're then going to calculate what's called the cosine similarity. Uh, and that's a measure which tells us basically how uh, how how similar each thing is to each other. So we'll see this in a second. I'll print it out and you can see. But for now, just do cosine sim. Okay, here I'm using this metrics package from uh, from Scikit-Learn here, uh, and pairwise. Oops, cosine similarity is the one that I want here, uh, and I'm going to pass in my vectors as a as a Python list here. And let's just print this out so we can see what's going on. So if I run this now, what we should see is we've got this whole array of stuff. It's the 2D matrix. Uh, this first row here is showing us, if you remember, the first thing was our value, so Viking here, and then our words is this list here. So what this uh, cosine similarity matrix is telling us is that for the first word, Viking, these are the the similarities. So obviously, for the you know the Viking was also the first word, so it's got a one there, which isn't too surprising. And then here we've got uh, 0.57, uh, which is relates to this string here. So it's telling us that there is some similarity between Viking and that. And then this is repeated for all of the other words in our in our list. So now we'll just get the scores that we need. Uh, we don't need this one because that was comparing the value to itself. And we just need the first row because that's the one that's relating to value. So we'll say scores was this and for the first row uh, and then ignoring the first one and then everything after that. So we can just check that we're getting the right thing here. Yep, that looks good. And what I want to do is put that into a uh, pandas data frame. So I'll say scores df pd data frame. And we we'll just create one column called score. And for the index, I'll use the words. Now, so that we can see the scores next to the table, let's create a, a table data frame as well. So say table df with all the table values and again, index it by words. And we can join those together. So just join these two and print that out to see what's going on. Now we can see we were, what we're we passing in, uh, Viking, and here we've got this table where we've got a score of zero everywhere apart from Viking here. So that's great. That's looking good. What I want to do now is just exclude all of these ones that are zero because they're really not interesting. So we'll put in a parameter here. Uh, I'll give it a I'll give it a threshold of 0.5 so that this gets included. Uh, and then we can just filter out anything uh, that doesn't meet that threshold. So df equals df, where the score oops, is greater than the threshold. OK, great. Now, there's going to be some cases where we have more than one result. So for example, if I put in management, that's a good one, and then run that. You see now we get like a load of different ones here. So what we need to do is uh, is sort this data frame by the score. So we'll say df df sort values. Uh, so say by score, and we'll want it in D 
descending order. Now for our Excel function, sometimes we'll want to return all the values and sometimes just one of them. So I'm going to add another parameter here, uh, all values. And if I don't want all values, then all I want is the top of this data frame here. And then the final thing to add is uh, selecting that column index. So if I add a col index parameter here, so that in, in Excel, when we do that VLOOKUP, we can choose just to get uh, one column. And the way I'll do that is by, by re-indexing the data frame just to include the columns that we want. So uh, oh, I'll also need to add uh, another, another flag to say include the score or not. So let's say include score. Yeah. Now to get the columns that I want, I uh, first of all say uh, the columns is going to be the table data frame. So uh, if the col index is none, I just want all of those columns, but otherwise I want the col index. So this col index that we pass in here, uh, for VLOOKUP you'd pass in one as the first column. So I'm going to add a minus one here so that when we pass in one, the actual column that we get is, is column zero, and that's how it's indexed in, in the pandas data frame we've got. Now I'll say if we've got this include score flag set, I'm going to add in the score column to our list of columns. Now we can re-index uh, re the data frame with the columns that we want. Now we've got all of these flags here, so we're saying you know all values or include score, and we can try this uh, here as well. So if I say here, are all values true and include score. Now we're getting all of those returned. And if I just say, just show me the first value, then yeah, so that's all working really nicely now. So now we've got this working in Python. Uh, the next thing is to, to get it working in, in Excel. And to do that, we'll use the, the pixel add-in. If you go to the website, www.pyxll.com, you'll find a load of information about the pixel add-in and you can, you can download it and read the documentation. Uh, you'll also need to install it, uh, which you can do by running uh, pip install pyxll, which I already have, already have that installed, and then do pyxll install, and then that's what will install the actual Excel add-in itself. But if you uh, just follow the instructions, uh, on the website, then that will tell you everything that you need to know to, to get started. To, uh, to expose our function to Excel, you can use the uh, pixel Excel funk decorator. So I'll say from here, uh, from pixel import Excel funk, and then this decorator is just applied to the function like this. And because uh, we're not going to use this NLP underscore VLOOKUP name, we'll give it a different name, we'll say NLP.VLOOKUP. That's the, the function that I showed you earlier. Uh, at this stage as well, I'm just going to tidy up these parameters. And uh, also give them some type hints. Pixel will use these type hints uh, to control how, how the Excel values are, are passed in. They're not always necessary, but it's, uh, but it's nice, especially when you're using uh, integers and stuff like that, because otherwise it'll get passed in as a, as a floating point number otherwise, and here we want an integer. Now we also need to set the uh, return value because we're going to be returning a data frame. And we need to tell Pixel how to, uh, how to convert that data frame into something that you can see in Excel. So we'll also use this uh, Excel return decorator, and we can use this to tell tell pixel what the return type of the function is. So we'll say Excel return, it's going to return a data frame. And here we're going to say that we don't want to return the index. And also we don't want to return the column names. So what this will do is take this data frame that we're returning, 
and then return that as a range in Excel without the index, and without the columns. So here, for example, we'll see just uh, these, these values here. We won't get the column names or the, uh, the index names. Now, if you want to read more about how types work in Pixel, if you go to the website, uh, you'll find that in the user guide under worksheet functions, there's a section on argument and return types here. Uh, and here this covers how you specify all the types, what, what types you can use, uh, custom types, that kind of thing. Uh, and there's also a section on the pandas types, which covers you know, returning uh, data frames and series and things. You can also pass these as arguments as well. The very last thing we need to do now is configure the pixel add-in so that it will load our NLP VLOOKUP function from, from our NLP VLOOKUP module. Uh, if you go into Excel, if you've got the pixel add-in loaded, uh, you can very easily get to the config uh, from here. I've got it configured just to open in PyCharm. Uh, and here you'll see one of the settings is the Python path. So that's where Pixel's going to look for your, uh, your Python modules and packages. If I copy in the folder where I've written my module there, then the next thing is further down, you'll see there's a list of modules. So these are the Python modules uh, or packages that the Pixel will load when it starts up. And I'm going to add in my NLP VLOOKUP package to that. Now back in Excel, if I reload, that will load all of those Python modules, including that new one. Uh, and that gives me this NLP VLOOKUP function that we saw earlier in Excel. Now, I think this is a really nice example of showing how we can do something, you know, really pretty complex in Python uh, in a relatively small amount of code, but then expose it to Excel so that uh, it's like really, really useful. Now, if this is something that you might use or might find useful, then, then let me know. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, then uh, then please get in touch.